what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just place the sump first. As mentioned before, the reason I do this first is so that we don't get any debris falling into our ice or having to fish out screws that fall. Everything is just going to be the reverse. Remember, do the heavy side first. That's where I don't put pressure on the actual sump. This can be a bit tricky sometimes. Just got to be patient. I'm going to go ahead and put that screw in, but I'll do it off camera because you're not going to see much with me standing in the way. Now we can put the pump back. Right. It's just easier to put the, the pipe to the actual pump first. And now we can put the screws into position. I'm just going to hold it here right. because we don't have good access at the back. Just make sure your connectors are always secure. You don't want any loose joints, it creates dry joints, creates heat, and that's when you start getting damage on your actual um, terminals. This one can be a bit tricky. Do a last spin, just make sure that you don't have any rubbing or scratching inside your actual pump. And that this is looking good, that's secure. If you remember, we took these clips off. Again, whatever you take off, just put it back in the reverse. I've already connected my, my sensor. So this is just gonna clip back on. And we're going to adjust this as we start doing the diagnostics on the actual ice machine. The skate goes back in reversal. And that just goes back on top here. What I'm going to do, uh, let me do it this way. This is very important. This cable can cause problems. If it's too tight, it will pick up the the sensor and you're going to get a false reading so what I usually do is that sometimes there is a clip at the back if not I just clip it in with a cascade give it a little bit of leeway and make sure that it falls naturally if it's too tight it's going to give me a false reading so I'm just going to give it a little bit of leeway that's perfect so my cascade is back this little grub screw push it backwards and just make sure that your holes are within these parameters. You don't want this too far there, otherwise you're gonna get water spilling out. So that hole is over there. And this one is here, if you can see it. Uh, let me just turn the camera. And that hole is just there, so we don't have spilling. Nicely tucked out the way. Now that everything's in place, as I said, it's just a reversal. Everything's secured, pump secured, and all our wires are connected. So everything is in place. Just do one last minute check, make sure everything is in place. Let's have a look here. All my cables are out of the way. Before we turn this machine on, I'm gonna do a last check. Make sure all my pipes are secured. And we're looking good. Right. We can put our stopper back and I'm going to turn on the water. There we see it's starting to fill up. 
now that water's filled up, again, one last minute check. Uh, just remember to check the fans at the, at the back by the condensing unit, make sure they are running free and we're ready to start. Depending on the model, you, have, you might have a wash cycle, so I'm going to click this into the wash cycle, which on this model it's down. If I have a look, my pump is turning, no noises, that's looking good. And I'm just going to adjust the camera because we're going to focus on the cascade. So what I'm seeing is I'm getting equal flow here, but here it seems to be a little bit dry. Reason being, if you can see, let me zoom in, this clip is restricting that hole, so I'm just going to slide this, just bearing in mind I have to try and get equal both sides, so that's looking a little bit better. It is a little bit slow, the water the water cascade, so if you look here, it's relatively full, except it starts getting a bit dry over here. So to, do, to fix that, I'm just going to open this regulator just slightly to allow a little bit more water to flow. Very important, this has to be clean. If, it, if, it's too, if there's too much uh, calcium or lime scale, it's, it's going to create these little eddies and affect my cascades. But if you have a look at the speed, it's equal flowing. It's not too fast and it's not too slow, so we, we're looking good. Just remember the machine is off, but this is a very important part just to make sure that I have got equal flow. I'm going to just tilt this a little bit more. That's looking a lot better. You're never going to get it 100% because of the, the sides that are on this specific one. We're going to have issues with this, but that, that's still okay. It will still freeze up. Also important, you don't want this, you don't want this to, to touch at the moment. I usually keep this at, at about 3 to 5 millimeters. So if I check between the, 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 the sensor and the tray, the ice is going to build up from here and it's going to create this thin layer and those two contactors will, will well, you, you, the ice is going to make contact with those two ropes and it will trigger the, the PC board to start the defrost cycle. Other than that, we're looking pretty good here. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just added my little thermometer. I hope you can see it. Very good place for it, but this is just for the demonstration. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my probe and I'm going to place it on the first cube. And if, to note the first cube, the I know that this side, if I follow the, the pipes, I know that this side is the this pipe here. And you've got a pipe here and you've got a pipe here. This one is coming straight from the compressor and it goes through the evaporator and comes out by this pipe back to the, the compressor unit. So I'm going to keep this here, you can see it, and I want to monitor the temperature dropping. And I'm going to do a comparison with round about, I'd say on this model, I'm going to try to compare that temperature with that temperature. I want to try and get it as equal as possible. This is part of the diagnostics, because we'll know that if our, um, our refrigerant is balanced. If that is warmer than that, then we have to just check, put our pressure gauges and see the, the gas balances. But uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to run this. Then we've got starter. Depending on the model, you might have to wait a couple of seconds for the compressor to kick in. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the compressor engaging. This can be a little bit tricky with this thermometer, but what you can do, what you can do is just use a piece of metal to hold the probe in place, not your finger because other, otherwise you'll get a false reading. If we have a look at our thermometer, we're starting to drop, 14.5, 14.3, so it's dropping quite rapid. So, just a quick update. So we're sitting at about 7.5 degrees, and it's still dropping 
relatively quickly in 7.2 and we're just going to be a little bit patient. Ice machines is all about patience. Today we're already at 6.8 degrees Celsius. So it's, it's dropping pretty fast. If you have a look here, you'll see some frost. That's a good sign. You're not always going to get frost here, but this should be, this side should be, uh, start, will start getting cold as soon as this temperature starts dropping. Because remember, as the refrigerant is moving through, it's drawing heat away from the water. So it will affect the temperature on these, on this section here. But there we're sitting at 4.5.7 and we're still dropping. So we have a look here. The machine's been running and I'm starting to see ice forming. Uh, it's obviously going to start here first and it will gradually start uh, icing up. Just remember it's not going to be as quick because our face pad is off. So we're getting a lot of heat transfers. If I take my infrared thermometer, we're seeing it negative four degrees Celsius and negative uh, what's that? About one uh, zero degrees. So as long as we get in the negatives, because here we go uh, negative one, because obviously white uh, ice is going to start forming in your sub uh, sub temperatures. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with this. It doesn't look like it's going to need uh, any gas or refrigerant. One, negative four. Just a quick reminder, the reason why the machine hasn't gone to, into defrost is because this has the defrost switch over here. If you do have the, uh, the model with the defrost over here, the defrost sensor, you can strap a little magnet onto it or you can actually follow the leads. I'll put the description in the video and you can disconnect the, the sensor and bypass it with the bridge. As I said, I'll explain that in the, in the actual theory. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now disinfect the, the unit. Before we disinfect, what I want to just demonstrate is this is the ice that forms. If you have a look, these are my ice cubes and there's a thin layer of ice sheet and that's what the sensors are going to detect. So if I had to do this, we're going to simulate a defrost cycle. So those probes are touching the ice, give it a couple of seconds and the machine will go into defrost. There it's picking it up and it's going to defrost. Automatically what's going to happen hot valve runs through the system and it's going to start warming up the evaporator. Just to give an example, if I start measuring, now we've got 19 degrees Celsius whereas we were in the negatives, 13. So if you have a look here, the hot gas is running through the evaporator and it's already starting to melt the ice. If we look at this, our test block, it's pushing itself forward. And what's gonna happen, the entire slab will push the cover plate and as the cover plate moves forward, it'll trip the sensor. On this model, we have our cover plate sensor here. So this is our defrost sensor. So let's just simulate that our ice falls and pushes the plate forward, flicks the switch, and there the machine goes back into a new cycle. As simple as that. We're already starting to drop, so where we were sitting, I think it was 16 degrees, we've got eight, five, and we're dropping quite rapidly. Four, same over there. This side will be a lot cooler because remember our this is our inlet to our evaporator. Other than that, I'm very happy with this machine. I'm pretty happy with this machine. I'm happy with the flow. 
so we can go ahead and disinfect. So to disinfect, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get free grade and disinfectant. The solution I use will be in the description and I'm just going to spray evaporator. Just remember once you've disinfected, you don't want to be touching it with bare hands again. I'm just going to tilt the camera back and I'm going to do the same at the top. I'm not going to worry about this because as the system um, cycles, it will disinfect the pipes. You can, if you want, add a little bit of solvent to your actual mixture, to your actual sump. So we have a look at our cover. It's got a little bit of lime scale. I tried my best to get rid of the, uh, most of it. But most importantly, I got rid of all the slime and the mold. What I'm going to do with this is give it a good spray. I'm going to leave this for a couple of minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll turn on the, the, uh, the rinse cycle. So it's been running for a few minutes. I'm now going to turn off the rinse cycle and I need to drain the sump. So I'm going to turn off the water. Take my bucket. Remember to always keep your eyes covered. And I'm just going to drain the sump. Our sump is empty, we can put our plug back, turn on the water. If you want, you can do this maybe two or three times. I normally just do a second run and just repeat the process. I just like to make sure that everything is out. This is fruit friendly disinfectant, so I'm not too phased about cross contamination, but I still want to just make sure that I've taken out as much uh, contaminants as possible. Remember, never use any industrial strength uh, cleaners, always use food grade products. So off camera, I did another rinse, uh, rinse cycle. I'm just looking here, I'm not too happy with the flow, so I'm going to open up the water flow slightly. Again, once you've disinfected, there's no need for, uh, for me to, uh, no need to touch this evaporator again. Is I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting ice build up. It doesn't have to be too much because again what I, ideally what I have to do is, is place the cover back and the, the front panel because the front panel has the uh, insulation. So what I'm looking for here is I'm just going to look at the quality of my ice. And pretty much what I'm interested in, in is if it has been, if it's equal. So if I look at this entire slab, it's poured pretty equal. That is, that thickness is a little bit too thick. I'm going to adjust the eye sensor to come down probably about a mil or two millimeters just to reduce that. Because the thicker this is, uh, okay, this will be from the bottom. Let's take this one here. So the thicker this layer is, the longer it takes to freeze and to go into a harvest. So I'm going to I'm going to come back probably about I'd say a good two two millimeters just to be sure. You can't just determine it from your first harvest. This is not my first harvest. This is the second one. The first harvest is usually pretty lousy. So always rely on your second harvest, second, third, or fourth. But ideally, the best way to tell is that if I take the ice and just tap it gently, it should collapse relatively easy. If I look at the cubes, they're looking pretty good. That means the water quality is satisfactory. If it's very cloudy, uh, you, you might have to get a client, the client to put a, a filter, uh, a water filter, filter in the system. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with this. As I said, I'm just going to reduce that to about, I'd say, good. I'm going to start off with, uh, with two millimeters and try out the cycle. One thing to remember about ice machines is that it does take time. The first cycle might be a bit lousy. Uh, 
So you always rely on your third or your second or your third cycle to, to be really sure that you're getting decent quality ice. The quality of ice is usually determined by the clarity. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly see-through. What determines that is that the type of filtration system you're using. Companies that claim that they have better quality ice is not, nothing to do with the type of water. All it is is just a type of filtration system and a reason to, to charge you more. Uh, if they do claim that the ice is demineralized or deionized, it's, it's the talking nonsense because the less ionization in the ice or the water, the sensors won't actually detect the, the water. So usually it's just they got a better type of filtration system, uh, which is interchangeable and can be serviced. So there's no reason to charge you more for, for clearer ice. The reason being is if your water is too pure, the sensor will not be able to pick the conductance of the water. So it's, as I said, it's, it's usually just a, a scam and a, and a marketing ploy to justify why they're gonna charge you more for ice versus just running through a normal filtration system. Just remember after manhandling the ice, um, this I can't place back in the bin because I've contaminated it, so I'm just going to throw this ice away.